Hello and uh, warm welcome to everyone for the start of our conference, Transforming Europe, the Green Deal in a New Context. I'm Gerhard Schick, Director of Finanzwende, a think tank and campaigning organization that aims to make finance serve society. I'm truly happy to see you all here in person. Uh, as you can see right now, with my crutches, I would actually be more comfortable right now to, be, uh, to uh, participate from my living room couch. Nonetheless, I decided to come here because I'm very happy to have you present and uh, see you after various uh, video calls. Looking back at March 2020, we all had to adapt quickly to the pandemic. Financial markets were in turmoil, supply chains severely disrupted, and our health systems came under unknown pressure, a crisis only few saw coming. While I also did not imagine a pandemic in 2020, there were signs for a multiplicity of crises on the horizon. Increased inequality post-2008, never before seen both private and public debt levels, and the climate crisis. Together with Barbara Unmüßig and Jörg Haas from the Heinrich Böll Foundation, we met in 2018 to discuss what civil society could do to address the trilemma of climate crisis, rising inequality, and an extractive and unstable financial system. While the neoliberal paradigm brought us many of these problems, we believed the next crisis could be a moment to fight back and institute progressive economic policies. Our reasoning was simple. In times of crisis, previously unthinkable policies suddenly became feasible, like bailing out large banks with taxpayer money, for example. I was a member of the German parliament at that time, was quite disappointed with the post-2008 financial regulation. Strong vested interests were one of the main reasons that prevented tougher regulation, and part of the reason why I decided to step down from the Bundestag in 2018 and found Finanzwende. While the 2008 crisis created ripple effects we feel today, it did not lead to an economic paradigm shift. One of the key reasons in our mind was the unpreparedness of both civil society and academia or progressive parties before 2008. Therefore, Heinrich Böll Stiftung and Finanzwende set out to raise funds for a project that should change this. Preparations ran throughout 2019. We started working on the project in February 2020. The plan was to launch a project in April, and then came COVID. The project was originally supposed to be called Transformative Responses to the Next Crisis. Yeah, we dropped the next, because the crisis had arrived. Together with some of you, we set up network calls to discuss and interpret the unfolding situation published a joint analysis centered on our economic system's proclivity to crisis and the need for a politics of resilience. Within our network, we tried evaluating what gaps and discrepancies we saw in the response to the pandemic. The continued reliance on monetary policy together with the postponed ECB strategy review led us to prepare a conference on next generation central banking. Because central banks increased their balance sheets enormously post-2008 uh, and then again in response to March 2020 they have become economic actors way beyond inflation control. That's why our conference focused on what this means for the transformation. How does monetary policy affect inequality, the climate crisis and financial instability? What could central banks do to change this and what kind of financial regulation could help reduce their role? The policy responses to the pandemic brought about different winners and losers. Monetary policy was crucial in supporting our economy, yet its transmission mechanism via financial markets led to higher wealth inequality post-pandemic. In March 2021, equity prices reached unforeseen highs, while furlough schemes and other government subsidies remained in place. Over the next upcoming weeks, both um, Daimler-Benz uh, uh, Daimler will pay out 5 billion euro in dividends. Volkswagen and BMW will add roughly 4 billion each, all while receiving government subsidies and investing too little in the transformation. Similarly, private equity firms have profited from large cash inflows and buying up crucial infrastructure, such as care homes, increasing their profits and decreasing the quality of care. If we want to involve the private sector that invests in the transformation, it will be crucial to regulate this and ensure that we are not once again providing it with an opportunity to make profits at the expense of everyone else. Between 2009 and 2020, 
The profits of the then 30 DAX companies increased by 48%. In the same period, payouts, dividends and buybacks, increased by 85%. Yet investment stagnated. Daniel Driscoll and Mark Blith excellently sum up what this means for transformational policymaking. The benefits have to reach the poorest and not make the rich richer. This is just one of the excellent papers from our great turnaround publication. Together with the Zoe Institute for Future Fit Economies and the Heinrich Böll Foundation, we organized multiple roundtables bringing together progressive economists from Europe and North America to discuss the policy interplay for a net zero agenda in the EU and US context. This was used as a significant part of the conference preparation. You have mine found references throughout the conference reader. I want to come back to a question I have asked myself multiple times throughout these past years. How can we make consistent transformative policies if we are constantly jumping from fighting one crisis to the next? This to me is key for a successful transformation. Together with Ronan Palmer of E3G and my colleague Michael Peters, we wrote a paper called Transformative Policies on a Bumpy Road. We looked at how during the 16 years of Merkel's chancellorship, she constantly faced systemic crises, from the financial crisis to the euro crisis, the EU border crisis, the COVID-19 pandemic, and then the constantly looming climate crisis. In a nutshell, we observe that crisis response policies proved to be more relevant in transforming our economy and society than many detailed political plans written down in election programs and coalition treaties. This is something I was thinking about a lot in the past months. The circumstances are constantly changing. To some people, COVID already feels like a pastime, even though we're sitting here with masks on. The main reason for the shift in tension is the devastating war in Ukraine. German Chancellor Scholz called this the Zeitenwende, a change of time. The war has led to vast destruction, millions of refugees, and a fossil fuel crisis. The world has spun at least twice as fast in the past two months, and once again, the policy responses are crucial. In Germany, the 100 billion euro package on defense spending marked a complete reversal from the coalition agreement made just a few weeks prior. Some people wonder whether the Greens, in view of the new importance of energy policy, could not and should not have pressed for a similar reversal on coalition agreements such as the speed limit. This shows the importance of quickly seizing moments of crisis for transformative politics and how important it is for policymakers to be prepared for such moments. To put it provocatively, politicians should put less energy on long-term programs in normal times and put more focus on preparing more radical policies for times of crisis. And that brings us back today to what we have set out to do with this project, develop transformative responses to the next crisis. The next unexpected turn is bound to come. Those who can then present suitable responses have a greater chance of driving toward the urgently needed social ecological transformation. These are the kind of questions we will address in the workshops for which we brought the Zoe Institute on board again to develop a methodology that allows us to discuss the interdependencies of climate inequality and financial market policies, first in smaller groups and then in larger groups. But Jörg and Jonathan will go into detail on this. But before we dive into the workshops, I'm looking forward to hearing the keynotes by Michael Jacobs and uh, Daniela Gabor, with whom we have worked fruitfully throughout this project. I'm very much looking forward to this and now hand over to Michael Jacobs, who is speaking for, to us straight from Sheffield, I assume, and I hope he'll be with us in a moment. Thank you.